Right. So, and the other component really is the the bid for optionality, and, and the bid for the optionality can can take on many different forms. So, um, so the the first thing that we look at is overall bid for optionality across all strikes. So, um, and that usually occurs when uh, after a tail event. So, after a tail event, uh, generally traders don't really understand uh, the uh, the implications of that tail event upon economic fundamentals. So they don't, and in turn, they don't want to sell options too cheaply. So they raise the price of puts, they raise the price of calls. And the way to do that is they, they raise the entire, they lift the entire volatility surface, yeah. right? And I want to dive in here just to kind of, uh, to simplify it a little bit. If, if you slide down to a higher implied volatility, like you're, like you're saying, Ed, you ultimately um, are at a higher vol, right? But maybe that higher vol uh, is, is a scenario where the market hasn't really moved that much. If you drop a half a percent, was that more volatile? No, but you've naturally slid to a higher implied vol. So maybe then they will lower the surface back to kind of where it was. But in, in the case that you're talking about where you get a more volatile event, or maybe there's more uncertainty as you slide down, that as you slide down to that, that up to that vol, um, that vol can then also expand. And that's really more of a, a, a tail event. And so that difference between the expected skew and the actual realized what happened is actually a critical first step. Right. Um, and then to your point, that's the the slide, but then you have other elements. So what are those? What are the other right. uh, so, 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 elements? So in addition to that lift, of what we call a parallel shift, and the, the increase in, in uh, optionality for every particular option, then there are the more subtle effects as well, 